Hey everyone, this is Kevin from thechesswebsite.com, and today we're going to be going over the Von der Lasse Gambit, which derives from the center game accepted line, which is pawn e4, pawn e5, and then after d4, the accepted line in the center game is pawn takes here on d4. And the Von der Lasse is bishop to c4, immediately getting material involved into the game, attacking this weakened square here on f7. Typically, you see knights come out before bishops, but white says, you know what, if we're giving up material, we want to start the attack as soon as possible. The three things that we are going to be looking at today as far as variations, the first one's going to be knight to f6, attacking his pawn here on e4. The next one we're going to be looking at is bishop here to b4, immediately getting their dark square bishop involved into the game, attacking our king here on e1. That's going to be most of our discussion. And then lastly, we will briefly touch on knight to c6. Hopefully you guys enjoy this video on the von der Lasse Gambit. The first variation we're going to look at is knight to f6. I think bringing the knight to c6 or f6 is going to be the most common. Just getting knights involved into the game makes a lot of sense. Uh, knight to f6... Makes total sense. Attacking this pawn here on a4. Also preparing to get the dark square bishop involved into the game. Castle on the king side. Anytime you play a gambit, you're not exactly sure from black standpoint how to defend. You usually want to get king side safety pretty quickly. So knight to f6 I think makes a lot of sense. We're going to play knight to f3 here. Attacking the pawn on d4. Also allowing them to take this pawn on e4 if they want to. I think they could either take with their knight or they could get their dark square bishop involved into the game. One of the reasons they play knight to f6 is to get their dark square bishop involved so they can castle on the king side. So I think those are going to be the most common here. So after they take here, we'll look at that. Then queen to d4. Yes, we're still down a pawn of material, but you can see we have a ton of pressure on our opponent. We're definitely controlling the center of the board. And really, after they've left that pawn go, they've just moved their knight two times. And now they have to either try to move it back a third time or they have to try to defend it. But they don't have a lot of good ways to defend it. Pawn to d5 really just loses to bishop takes on d5 because then after knight to f6, uh, then we could just play knight to c3. Uh, just getting more pieces developed into the game. We can get our bishop involved if they want. Maybe knight takes, knight takes here. Uh, and then dark square bishop, castle on the queen side, even if we want to castle on the king side. So we have tons of options here, and we're not even down a pawn in material anymore. So I think that's going to be a pretty tough way for black to defend. So I don't think d5 is going to be all that popular, but you definitely could see it. f5 gets pretty tricky in that we have already announced that we want to play a pretty aggressive game and start to attack our opponent. And now they're just weakening their king side. And usually when this happens, I try to get more material involved into the game. So knight to c3 makes a ton of sense to me. Maybe they play knight to c6, trying to get some of theirs involved into the game, attacking our queen. But you can see we could just play queen to d5. Now this threatens the move queen take or queen to f7 checkmate. They pretty much have to play something like knight to f6. But then we can just start to gobble up material. They've played knight takes. We played knight takes here on e4. They play pawn takes. And then queen to e4 take and gaining tempo here, attacking the king here on uh, e8. And you can see things just aren't looking that great. We can play bishop here to g5, getting that involved into the game, then castle on the queen side. We have much more aggressive lines that black would have to deal with. So I don't think playing d5 or f5 are going to be preferred by black. Uh, they could play knight to c5. Uh, this does get the knight out of harm's way because it is protected by the bishop. I do think this blocks where this bishop can really go. They're going to have to play pretty passive just to play bishop here to e7 if they want to castle on the king side. So this does block off a lot of the ideas that they want to play. But from here, we're just going to stay aggressive. Bishop here to g5, uh, attacking the queen here. Maybe bishop to e7 as we talked about. But then as soon as they play bishop to e7, we can automatically take this pawn here on g7. This not only attacks the rook here on h8, it also defends this bishop here on g5. Notice we have the queen and the knight both defending this bishop here on g5. So it's going to be pretty fine. Now they play rook to f8. Then we castle on the king side and we have a pretty good setup. And you can see they no longer have king protection. It's going to be really difficult for them to castle on the queen time the queen side any time soon. So I think the best move really from black is to just play knight to f6, but you can see they've now moved their knight three times and it's really just come back to the original position. 
We're going to play knight to c3, just getting more material involved into the game. Maybe bishop here to e7. Same thing as before. Get our dark square bishop involved into the game. Castle on the king side. Castle on the queen side. And it is a race to attack our opponent. Remember, there's different variations in here. And we're down a pawn in material. So we have to stay aggressive. And there's no more... Uh, there's no better way to stay aggressive than to castle on opposite sides. Typically, if you castle on the queen side, they castle on the king side. It is just a race to throw everything in the kitchen sink at your opponent's uh, king and try to overwhelm them. And since we have so much more material developed, we control the center of the board. That should not be a problem at all. Now, if we come back to this position, instead of the knight taking here on e4, I also think that it's reasonable that you could see bishop here to b4. Prepares to castle on the king side, which makes sense. Checks our king here on e1. We're always going to be playing pawn to c3, stopping that. I think they're always going to be playing pawn takes here on c3. That's everything I've ever seen. You could see some weird stuff, and that's okay as well. And from here, there, there's kind of two options. Uh, one option is to take with our pawn here on c3, attacking the bishop. The other one is to play castle on the king side. And one reason I like castling on the king side is this very similar to the Danish gambit, where they could just keep taking pawns. But then after we take here, yes, we're down two pawns in material, but you can see we have a very aggressive setup. Both of our bishops are developed. They're attacking the king side of the board. We have the only pawn in the center of the board. We've already castled, so we have king safety. Our queen is open, so it can get anywhere it wants to. If it wants to get pretty aggressive here, come here to b3, putting pressure on the f7 square, attacking the bishop. Um, so many different options. Things are wide open. Black just hasn't really developed too many of their pieces and does not have king safety yet. So that, I think, is completely fine. But the reason that I actually like taking here on c3 all comes down to what do they do after we say pawn takes on c3? Because I think most of them are going to play something like bishop to c5. This gets it out of harm's way. They recognize that no pawn can really push up in make this bishop move. We can't play a knight and make it move. So this keeps it central. It attacks this pawn here on f2. The problem, though, is white now has the move pawn to e5. And this, I think, is the main reason that you would want to play pawn takes here on c3, forcing the bishop to move. Now, that doesn't have to move. We'll look at one other variation where they could play just d5 instead of attacking our own bishop here. But after we play pawn to e5, I think they're usually just going to play knight to g4. And now we can get pretty aggressive. We can play bishop takes here on f7, attacking the king. King takes here and then knight to g5 check and you can see we have a pretty aggressive setup here uh, we can get our bishop involved to the game our queen obviously is going to get involved into the game at some point this opens up to go ahead and take the knight right here so lots of different options that white has here and so i think this is the reason that you actually want to take here on c3 now i think the best option for black i think it's very difficult for them to find is after we take here on c3 is to play the move d5, attacking our own bishop in the center of the board. In this case, we're going to go ahead and take their bishop. And then they may play bishop comes back here to uh, a5. The problem is for black, this is also a mistake. They really need to be bringing their bishop back here so they can protect their king. And, the, and this is another reason that this is such a dangerous trap for black to fall into is because, yes, they played the correct move, I think, with pawn to d5. But after we take here, they can still make more mistakes. Because after bishop to a5, we play the sneaky move bishop to a3. And it may look like, wow, this is nothing. I don't understand. There's no threat here. What are they doing? Well, one, it stops black from castling. So that's a big thing. But the other thing is white's next move is going to be queen to e2 with the threat of eventually coming here to e7 because this would be check and so there's no real way to stop this you know they could play bishop here to e6 but then we just take it with our pawn they could play queen to e7 but then we just take that with our queen here and it's protected by the bishop 
And that's why this move here on a5, bishop to a5, is so bad. Although it doesn't really look that bad. Because it looks like, yeah, we still have the bishop involved into the game. It's pinning down this pawn to the king. And so you want to maintain that pressure. But it's actually a huge mistake. Because you want to use this dark square bishop for black to be able to defend the queen coming here to e2. So how could black really respond here? Lots of ways they could try. But maybe pawn to c5. Okay, we just take with our bishop, but that does open up for the queen to come here to c7. Queen to e2, this is the critical move we've talked about here. King to d8 potentially, now we just start pushing up with our pawn, pawn to d6, attacking the queen. Queen to d7, now we get our knight involved into the game. Maybe they swing their rook over, that's fine, we can castle to get king safety here. Uh, knight to g4, attacking the knight, we're just going to go ahead and take here. But this knight here on g4 also opens up for the rook to come down, take here. But then after the exchange, we take with our knight here on b8. We're also still threatening this rook here on e2 with our bishop. So they're probably going to have to move their rook bishop here to d4. And you can see their bishops really aren't doing anything. Their bishop here on a5, which was pinning down our pawn, it's just hanging out here. Light square bishop's not doing anything. Their king is completely exposed, and we have a pretty good setup here. After the rook takes, we play pawn h3, forcing this knight back here. The knight was protecting the rook, and so we're just attacking so much material, they are going to lose a significant piece of material, and their king is still exposed. So that is why, if we come back, you know, so many moves, yes, I think d5 makes a ton of sense. But after we take here, they still have to worry about playing the wrong move, bishop to e5. They really need to come back, something like bishop to e7. All right, now if we come back to the beginning, we looked at knight to f6 and all the ways that you could potentially counterattack that. Next one we're going to look at is bishop here to b4. Just immediately say, hey, if you get your bishop involved into the game, we're going to get ours involved into the game, but we're going to go ahead and check you. Same thing as before, we're going to play pawn to c3. After they take, we're still going to take here. We don't even have the option to castle on the king side, so there's that. Keep in mind, as we looked at before, bishop to a5 was a mistake. It's still going to be a mistake, but it's going to be a mistake for different reasons. Before, we were playing, you know, our, our pawn was in a different spot here, and so we're going to be looking to play queen to e2 because our pawn was going to be on at d5. But the threat now is queen to d5. This threatens the move queen takes here on f7 checkmate and so they usually have to play something like queen to e7 but then we can just take their bishop here on a5 so that would be a massive mistake from them so we already recognize they can't play bishop to a5 and so where else do they go maybe bishop to uh, d6 okay that does block off just their d pawn moving forward a little bit now we just played knight to f3 Getting more material involved into the game. Knight to c6 here. Castle on the king side. And from here, I think play continues completely fine from both sides. We still have the threat here on f7. And it is going to take them a couple moves before they can even castle on the king side. We already have king safety here. And we have a lot of different ways to get our bishop involved into the game. Our queen has lots of avenues as well. They don't have as many. And their light square bishop is blocked off. The other option is to get their queen involved into the game. Okay, so we play pawn to c3, queen to f6 here. And this is an interesting threat because if we take their bishop, then all of a sudden they can just take our rook here on a1. I still think that that is the preferred way to go. It is pretty risky for sure, but after we take their bishop, they take our rook here. We're going to play queen to b3 with the threat of bishop takes here on f7. I think they pretty much always are going to play queen to f6. If not, that is going to be a mistake. They really need to get their queen back here to f6 to defend this. But now we can play knight to f3. Yes, they did take that material, but they are just moving one piece around the board. We're getting more and more material involved into the action. We can castle on the king side here. And so, yes, we do need to stay aggressive in this spot because we just traded off a rook for a bishop. We still have the bishop pair here, here. Uh, but this is a situation where if you look at this and you say, absolutely, I want to play this all day long because this is very aggressive, then this is a variation that you may want to go down in the Vanderlasse Gambit. There's just so many different ways that you can attack your opponent. The last thing we are going to touch briefly on 
is instead of the bishop coming here to b4, you could also see knight to c6. And then we play knight to f3. The reason we're not going to talk about this too much is because this right here is the scotch gambit. And I have a specific video going over the scotch gambit. Everything that you'll see in this specific variation, I will have a link right at the end of this video if you want to watch that. I'll also have a link in the description if you want to watch that. Uh, but just know this variation is the scotch gambit. I've already covered it. So definitely check that out if you like this gambit and you're like, I want to make sure that you're covered with Knight to C6 because it is very popular. Uh, make sure you check that out. But thank you guys so much for watching the video. If you haven't already, hit the like button. Let me know what you thought of the content today. If you have any other recommendations, I would appreciate it. Always looking for new content ideas. Thank you guys. I'll see you in the next video.